Some gases can't be generated by the in-syringe method that we demonstrated earlier. Uh, in particular, hydrogen chloride, carbon monoxide, ethene, and methane have to be generated by a method that involves heating the two reagents. They don't react at room temperature. This, um, this technique is slightly different then. As a result, it uses a test tube. And uh, to that, we will connect a rubber stopper with two glass tubes and two short pieces of latex tubing. And to the latex tubing, we connect two syringes. These syringes have been lubricated so that they move very easily within the plunger. This time I used silicon oil. Other oils work as well, but vegetable oil doesn't work very well with hydrogen chloride and some of the other gases. Anyway, let's see. Get that. They should be empty to start with. We also use a small We also use a small hemostat, little plastic hemostat, and we can clamp off one syringe. The reagents in here will react and the gases will be the gas will be collected in this syringe. Once this syringe is filled, We'll switch, switch the hemostat to the other side and collect gases in this syringe. The first, oops, I'm not left-handed. The first syringe will contain a mixture of the gases that are being generated as well as the air that's in this test tube. So we'll consider the first collection of about 30 milliliters to be just waste material and will probably be discarded. Then we'll switch to this other syringe and collect gases for real. It's also a good idea to have a third and possibly a fourth syringe handy because we can collect multiple syringefuls of gases by this method. I've lubricated the diaphragm just to have this one ready to go. It's a good idea also to not have the diaphragm completely seated. For some reason, it has a hard time getting started in moving, in moving the plunger up through the barrel. So I always take it off the bottom by just a, a tiny, tiny bit. We'll set that aside. We need a ring stand to hold the device. And the test tube will be clamped there. The syringe, syringes shouldn't be tightly clamped, only loosely clamped, so because plastic can be squeezed and then the uh, plunger can't move in the barrel. So I just clamp it very weakly. And it looks a little odd at first. The test tube is clamped tightly up near the stopper. Eventually we'll put the reagents in there to see how everything looks, make sure all the fittings are nice and tight. And then we put the uh, hemostat on this tubing and making this the waste syringe in this demonstration. Now the reaction that I will do today will produce carbon monoxide. And that is, involves reacting formic acid and consulfuric acid. You need about 8 to 10 drops of each to perform the reaction. So I'll drip in 8 to 10 drops. And sometimes the reaction just starts as soon as the sulfuric acid hits. It's a very slow reaction and benefits from gentle heating. Now I'll put the rubber stopper firmly inside the test tube and uh, heat. This time, some, uh, with, with hydrogen chloride, for example, you need to use a Bunsen burner. This is all described in the books and at the website. But in order to collect carbon monoxide, all we need is to heat it with 
a piezoelectric lighter. This provides enough heat to actually do the whole experiment. So, just before we start, let's make sure everything's in order. Will this plunger move easily? Yep, seems like it will. And this one needs to move too. Just unclamp that for a second. Make sure everything's fine. Looks pretty good. So I think we can start the experiment. Okay. Just play the flame on the chemicals. And as soon as the bubbling starts, the plunger should start moving up in the waste collection syringe. If it is, fine. If it isn't, then um, we need to help it along. But it seems like it's working pretty well this time. Collecting the gas slowly is always a good idea. And once we've collected about 20 mils, 20 or 30 mils, which we think is the volume of the test tube, we'll switch the hemostat and now collect gases on this in this syringe. Again, watch to make sure the plunger is moving. Now, while it, ha while it continues to collect, this is a chance for us to remove the waste syringe if we want and put on a clean syringe to collect another syringe full of carbon monoxide. I'll continue to heat now. And once I've collected about 50 mils, I'll switch back. That's about right. This gives me a little time to switch back and then make sure this plunger is also going to move easily. And so on. And that way you can collect several syringefuls of the gas and then perform experiments on them. When you want to stop the reaction, just simply remove the heat and let it cool for a couple of minutes. The plunger on this syringe may go back in a little ways, but that's fine. Um, and then you're ready to go.